Hello and welcome to the Nicholas Conservatory and Gardens. My name is Lindy Tuhill and I'm the Manager of Education and Programs here at the Conservatory. And today I'm here to welcome you for your virtual butterfly field trip. Um, since we can't be together in person, we hope to see you soon. First thing people ask us about our butterfly exhibit is where do your butterflies come from? It's obviously not butterfly season outside here in Northern Illinois, it's still a little chilly, so we have to get our butterflies from somewhere. We have a mixture of native butterflies and exotic butterflies, which means uh, butterflies that you can find here in Rockford in the summertime or ones that you can find only in tropical places. So our butterflies come from two different places. Um, we get them from Florida here. It's where we get a lot of our um, more native species. Uh, they get shipped straight to Rockford. We also get some exotic species from Costa Rica, which is in Central America. Those get shipped all the way up here to Minnesota where our butterfly supplier will take all of those chrysalis that he gets and divvy them up for different uh, butterfly exhibits throughout the country. And then he'll mail ours to us. All of our butterflies that we receive um, come in the pupa form, which a pupa is the, the stage of the life cycle for a butterfly that's between a caterpillar and an adult butterfly. So it's that part where they're all curled up inside their pupa and creating, managing all their cells around and switching from the caterpillar to a butterfly. It's called metamorphosis. So all of our butterflies we get are in that stage. Interesting thing, we hear a lot of people um, you know, asking what's the difference between a, a cocoon and a chrysalis. The difference is a chrysalis is the pupa stage for a butterfly and a cocoon is the pupa stage for a moth. And I'll show you a little bit more about that later. Check it out, we're on the inside of the emergence room now, the one that you see from the classroom that I was just outside of, now we're inside. So this is our emergence room and what this area is for, it's for all of our butterfly chrysalis and our um, moth cocoons, our pupa. So um, in this space, the reason that we have this space back here is um, we're basically keeping all the butterflies where they're supposed to be, but then also keeping out any pests um, that either came on the butterflies from Costa Rica or Florida. Um, we want to make sure those don't get out into our natural environment. We also want to make sure that anything um, from outside doesn't make it into here to hurt our little butterfly chrysalis too. Um, so this is our emergence room. So we have the double door system here um, that only certain staff can come into. Um, so we're pretty excited to be the ones that get to do it because it's really, really fun. So today I'm going to tell you a little bit about the butterfly life cycle. Uh, the butterfly life cycle is similar to a lot of other insects. In fact, butterflies are insects. So um, they all have some sort of egg stage, a larva stage, um, a metamorphosis phase, and then in their adult phase. So same thing happens with um, ladybugs, with dragonflies. It's all really similar. Um, in this case today, we'll be talking about butterflies and specific to monarch butterflies. So they start off as an egg. Um, an egg is laid on a host plant, and a host plant is the plant that they know that their caterpillar is going to eat. So you won't see a monarch butterfly laying its eggs on an oak tree. They know that their caterpillar is not going to eat that. So they're going to lay it on a milkweed plant, which is the host plant for a monarch butterfly. When the egg hatches, after about four or five days, the little caterpillar is going to be munching, munching, munching away. They start off about the size of a grain of rice, and by the end of it, they're about the size of an adult's pinky. So they just eat and eat and eat and eat for about two weeks. So it's kind of like you guys growing right now. You're just eating and growing and eating and growing all the time. That's what they're doing right now. So after about 14 days of eating, that's all they do, then they become a pupa or chrysalis. So this is where all the magic happens, where all of their cells are rearranging and all this crazy stuff, um, and you know they're becoming less of a caterpillar and more of a butterfly. Um, they have all the cells in their body to do this the whole time. If you think about when you're a baby, you know how you didn't have any teeth yet? So you always have had the cells to be able to make your teeth that have been in there, they just haven't shown up yet. So your body just hasn't put, haven't put the pieces together. So that's what's happening with the butterflies too. So they're always carrying around those cells in their body when they're a caterpillar. And then when they're inside their pupa here, that's when all of those cells are rearranging to be able to make you know, wings and antennas and all kinds of cool stuff. So after they're in their pupa stage, um, for about 12 to 18 days in the case of a monarch butterfly, then they'll emerge as an adult butterfly and then they'll Live for, monarch butterflies live for about a month, um, unless they're at the end of the summer when they're having to make that really long journey to Mexico. Those are the special ones. They get to live a little bit longer. There's some cool science there. Um, but they'll find a mate, they'll lay more eggs, and then the whole cycle happens again. So that's the basics on the caterpillar life cycle. 
There's some really cool books you can pick up. There's a lot of resources online, too, uh, for learning more about butterflies. Um, I have two favorite books that we like to keep here at our classroom at the conservatory. Um, one we have is a guide to butterflies. So we actually use this a lot, even with our horticulture staff outside. They see that yeah, they found something and they want to look it up. So this has all of our butterflies that are native to North America. Pretty cool. The one thing it doesn't have in here is really good caterpillar pictures. And that's usually when you don't know what it is. So we also have a really cool book all about caterpillars. So in this one, our horticulture staff love this one because if you gardeners out there know, you're always finding all kinds of stuff in the garden and you don't know what it is. So this one has got some really cool pictures of different types of caterpillars and what they eventually become. So different butterflies and moths and things, um, what those caterpillars eat, those host plants again. So really, really cool books. There's all kinds of resources online. If you guys have any cool questions, anything burning questions that you have, please feel free and contact us here at the conservatory. We'd be so, so, so happy to answer those for you. Um, we miss you guys all so much and we hope to see you soon. Here are our caterpillars. We get some of our butterflies in as caterpillars just because we like to show this stage of the life cycle. So these here are our monarch caterpillars. It looks like they're taking a nap right now. It's after lunchtime here. Um, so they are in here munching away on milkweed um, and we like to share that with you so that maybe you can plant some milkweed where you live and hopefully get some monarch butterflies in your backyard because they are a native butterfly and they're really, really cool. So when these guys um, are in here, they're going to be eating and eating and eating. It's their entire job to just eat and grow. Kind of like you when you're right now as a kid, you're just eating and growing a whole lot. That's what these guys are doing too. So they're eating, 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 pooping, pooping, pooping. And then eventually, when they start to get really big about, let's see, here's my pinky. <laughs> when they start to get, this one's almost there. Um, when they start to get about the size of my pinky, they'll crawl all the way up this milkweed here, all the way up to the tippy top of this little cage. They'll hang like a little J shape. And then they will make their chrysalis. So here I have four different pupa. And remember we talked about a pupa is the stage of life between a caterpillar and an adult insect. So these are all pupa. But I'm going to tell you that one of them is a moth cocoon and three of them are butterfly chrysalis. Do you think you can figure out which ones are which? They've all got different shapes, different colors, different textures, right? What do you think? If you chose that you think this one is the moth cocoon, you would be correct. And the way we can tell this is look at the difference in the texture of all of these. So this one, um, if you look closely, you can see that it's actually, it's wrapped in leaves and silk, um, which is pretty cool. And also the way it, you can tell too is if you shake it, you can hear that little noise in there. That's because that's actually where the pupa is inside of this extra little cocoon structure. So here's one that um, a moth has already emerged from. So you can actually see there's what's left of that pupa that casing in here. So you can see it's almost like it built a little pupa inside of this nice little package that it uses to overwinter um, here in um, areas where we live, especially in Northern Illinois, the overwinter in leaf litter. So be careful when you're cleaning up those leaves with your family. So welcome to the last room in our emergence room. And this is where all of our chrysalis live for our butterflies. So right now we have some gold rim swallowtails, a couple of owl butterflies, um, some uh, king swallowtails, which are pretty cool. Um, so what we do in here is when the butterflies emerge, we uh, take them out to the butterfly house so they can fly around out there and drink nectar from all of our beautiful flowers and enjoy that. Um, other care that we do in here, um, so we take out any of the chrysalis um, that are empty that the butterflies have already come out of so it stays nice and clean and fresh looking in here. The other thing we do is keep the humidity up, which is really important, especially when it's a little bit dry still um, here in northern Illinois this time of year. Um, the humidity will help the butterflies emerge really well when they do decide to come out um, and greet the world. So um, what we do is we take our little misting bottle here. This is just some distilled water. Um, we just spray them down. And you can actually see sometimes they even move, which is kind of cool. These are owls. These are king swallowtails. Look at them go. I bet you didn't know they could move when they were in their chrysalis, did you? 
that's a pretty fun fact. Everyone really loves that. So here we are inside of the butterfly enclosure out in the conservatory. This is where all of our butterflies and monarchs go to live once they've emerged from their pupa. So this is where they get to spend their last days. Most uh, butterflies and moths, um, they really live very short lives once they become an adult butterfly or a moth. Um, for moths, it can sometimes only be a couple of days. Like Luna moths don't have any mouth parts, so they can't eat anything. Uh, so they will usually just mate and then that's the end of their life. Um, for butterflies, they can live anywhere from about two weeks as an adult butterfly um, up to a couple of months. So it depends on the type of butterfly, what species they are. Um, in the wild, a lot of times they get eaten before uh, they get to live that long because they are an important part of the food chain. So in here we've got all kinds of different butterflies. You can see some blue morphos behind me there. They're some of our largest butterflies. And we also have some smaller butterflies that we get in throughout the year too. Do you think you can spot the difference between the moth and a butterfly? These are both very colorful. They both have pretty big wings, but there's some key differences. The one on the back of my fingers there has a really slender body, skinny little antennas. This guy here has got fuzzy antennas and a really big fuzzy body. If you think this green one on the front of my hand is a moth, then you'd be correct. That's a Luna moth, and they're native to here in northern Illinois. The one on the back of my hand is called a Malachite butterfly, and they're native to Central America. So those are the key differences, is that the fuzzy bodies, the size of their bodies, the antenna, how fuzzy or not fuzzy they are, um, that's the key difference between butterflies and moths. The other thing is the way that they rest their wings. Do you see the Luna moth is resting with its wings open? and the malachite rests with its wings closed. Um, and when you look around the conservatory, you'll see that's what all the butterflies do. When they're just hanging out, they keep their wings closed and their camouflage on. Moths, they leave them open. And this guy, another difference too, moths tend to be nocturnal. So that means they like to be out at the nighttime. So this guy is looking pretty sleepy right now versus the butterflies are flying all over the place and enjoying the sunshine. This is a malachite butterfly, and you can see what he's doing right there. He's actually getting a drink. Butterflies don't eat anything, so butterflies don't bite. They can't. All they've got is a little straw that they carry with them. It's kind of like having a little crazy straw, and he just keeps it with him all the time, curled up next to his mouth there. And then when he lands on a flower or in a little nectar station like we have here, he just uncurls it and uses it like a big straw. So you can see him reaching down in there to drink up that nectar. You'll probably notice something about the shapes of the flowers that we have here in the butterfly exhibit. We choose flowers that we think the butterflies will really like, and a lot of that has to do with the shape. So if you look here at this little Mexican heather, it's kind of a, a trumpet-shaped flower. You see how it's kind of long in the back? So if you look at the, the video of the butterfly drinking out of the nectar station, he can reach really far down into this long, skinny little tube to get the nectar out of the inside of this flower. And while he's at it, he's accidentally getting all this pollen on his mouth too. And then when he pops from flower to flower, he's sharing the pollen between all of the different plants. So that's how butterflies um, inadvertently pollinate a lot of flowers. They don't mean to, they're just after nectar, but they do it anyway. Do you think this is a butterfly or a moth? It's actually a butterfly. People sometimes think this one is a moth because it's brown. But like we talked about, not all moths are brown and not all butterflies are really bright and colorful. This one is our blue morpho butterfly, which we get a lot of throughout the season. And it's actually bright blue inside. We'll see if he can open his wings for us. Oh, there we go. All right on cue. So this butterfly uses camouflage to blend in in its natural environment. So if it's sitting next to like a brown um, tree, you can see how it would blend right in with its brown on its outside of its wings. It can also use those big owl eye spots on its uh, wings as, uh, to scare off predators too. So someone might come to eat it and if it flashes those big wings with the owl eye spots, it might say, don't eat me, I'm an owl. So today we're actually going to do an activity based off of that where you can use some of your creativity and uh, make your own butterfly with your own imagination. 
and see what kind of colorful insides you can make with it and see what kind of um, interesting camouflage you can make with the outside. Or maybe yours isn't camouflage. Maybe it's got a really scary outside so that no one will eat it. It's totally up to you. So next we're going to do a project um, with some things you can find around the house. So um, what we're going to do this year, um, a new project that we've added for uh, the conservatory field trip, and luckily it turns out really well that we can do it on a virtual field trip too. So what we're going to do is we're going to play off um, the cool colors that we saw on those butterflies inside the conservatory. Do you remember how the blue morpho butterfly, when it's sitting like this, it's got kind of a brown on the outside so it can camouflage into trunks of trees and on branches and stuff. And then when it opens its wings, it's bright, bright blue and super pretty. So this is where you get to let your imagination fly and make your own special really cool butterfly. So first thing you want to do, find a piece of paper. It can be whatever piece of paper you want it to be. It doesn't matter. And then we're going to fold it in half. Just like that. So um, one thing you probably noticed about the butterflies too is they're always symmetrical. So they've always got wings that are the same shape on either side, whether it's a butterfly that's kind of more like that or like one of our long wing butterflies, they always have sim symmetry in the way that they're shaped. So that's why we fold it in half, that we will make two perfect sides. So you can make whatever kind of shape of butterfly you want to make. Um, I think I'm going to make a swallowtail butterfly, which have really cool big long tails. They're one of my favorites. Kind of with some scallopy wings, big long tail. Kind of like, eh, I can't quite see them. That's mine. So and then you can take your scissors and cut that out. You can do it as simple or as complex as you want to. It's totally up to you. In fact, I think I've changed my mind as I'm cutting it out. So I do that sometimes. So I'm going to make it a little bit different shape than I drew it. So. Here's my, kind of looks like a thumbs up. Like us on Facebook. All right, so you can open it up. It looks like a butterfly, right? All right, so the next thing we're gonna do, see how you kind of got an inside and an outside? So on the inside, you can color it whatever colors you want. So I'm going to make mine, I'm gonna make mine green and purple because I like green and purple and it's the color of the conservatory. So I'm gonna like, you know, do some cool coloring and stuff like that. Oh man, this is blue, I wanted purple, oh well. Try and make it as symmetrical as you can too, um, because again, they are symmetrical. So you want to make both sides more or less the same. And if you want to, you can always even kind of make a little bit of a body in the middle too. So that's the inside of my butterfly wings. Again, I kind of did kind of a blue and green color. So the next part that we're going to do is the outside of the wing. So this is the part where we want a little bit of camouflage because you know, those big beautiful butterflies flying around um, and it doesn't want to get eaten by birds and everything else. So it wants to, when it's time to hide, clench up just like that and be able to blend right in like magic. So um, next thing you're going to want is glue stick or even just some regular school glue, white glue will work just fine too. And um, just use your glue stick and just put it all over the outside of here. And then next we're gonna go outside and find some really cool things that we think would make some really, really good camouflage. So now I'm outside of the conservatory. Um, so this is a part where you can definitely go outside and explore your backyard, your neighborhood and find some really good stuff to do. So again, I've got my, my outside of my butterfly, my glue stick or my white glue. I'm just gonna get really sticky. This is the part it'll be a little bit harder to do something symmetrical, but that's okay. So you can find all kinds of cool stuff. Like I just found a leaf here. Um, and there are a couple smaller leaves I think would be nice. There's some like little seed heads that are kind of cool. So those can kind of go on there just like that. And you can add more glue if you want to. Mine is the quick project, but I'm sure you guys will do some really cool, amazing stuff that lasts a little longer than mine, my quick version here. So you can see how it's got all kinds of cool leaves and stuff stuck to it. So when it's flying around and it's got its bright colors on the inside, then when it stops and it needs to hide, it can hide right up against a tree or it can even hide like whoop. Down here in the leaf litter, no one will even notice. 
So some really cool camouflage. Um, if you guys make one at home, definitely let us know. We would love to see it if your uh, mom and dad, grandma, grandpa want to post that on our Facebook page or send it to us, Instagram. We would love, love, love to see it because we miss you guys so much. So have a great time and we hope you enjoyed your virtual field trip and we will talk to you soon.